r slash ask reddit by reddit and chill police officers of reddit what are some laws that you feel uncomfortable enforcing because you disagree with them worked for a city station in australia that fully expected that we would give tickets to people for being homeless or begging for money these tickets were 600 dollars at least i pretty much refused to give them out because it felt barbaric like homeless people didn't already have it rough enough without getting a $600 ticket, which if they didn't pay would turn into a court case warrant. How were they gonna pay it anyway? The only point to it seemed to be to kick them while they were down. Plus, begging for money is a summary offense here. Not an indictable offense. And we have discretion for summary offenses. Meaning the superior officers wanted us to be jackasses for the sake of it. I was in charge of training new recruits at the time and I thought it was better to demonstrate compassion to them and teach them what services were available to the homeless and when. How to get them fast tracked into emergency housing and what places would offer free food. I transitioned out of that station because I was tired of getting shit for not giving people shit. Everything wrong with the justice system right ducking there. The fact anyone thought to give you shit for not treating the homeless like vermin and trying instead to help them improve their lives shows exactly why the ever-growing gap between the police and the public exists. Hope you're still working in law enforcement though. We need people who actually give a duck now more than ever. Open liquor laws. You wanna have a beer while you float down the river? Have it er. Uh. Gonna throw that beer bottle over the side into the stream? Damn right I'm gonna write you up for littering. And then the open liquor ticket is a duck you for being a selfish ass. Edit. As was pointed out I should clarify. Floating downstream on an inflatable tube. Not drinking while operating a boat. That still gets you charges. I am 100% in support of the a-hole tax. In any form it takes. Including not putting your cart back where it belongs after shopping. Cops in my town carry nickels and feed the beaters instead of taking the time to write tickets. Cops in my town hide behind corners and wait for the meter to run out so they can sprint to your car and slam a ticket on it. I believe the new meters simply send the meter made a notification when the meter expired so they can go do a round and see if there's still a car parked there with no time left. Not exactly a law but it's the closest thing I have that's semi-relevant. I did a spell as deputy and had to work in the city jail. When working the jail, I would be put in charge of the holding cells where you would go while you wait to see a magistrate judge to get your bail set. You could be in these cells for up to 72 hours in same cases. Anyway, the rules for this particular part of the jail were that you could not shower for 72 hours and you got one meal every 8 hours while you were there. Meals were served at 6 a.m., noon and 6 p.m. If you shower up at 6.30 you were not getting fed until 6am for example. The food they would serve her was always the same. Bologna sandwich. White bread. American cheese. One apple and one bag of pretzels. Nothing fancy or delicious but it would keep you going until you were released or sent up to the normal jail cells. Anyway. I'd always order a dozen or so extra lunches to have on hand for anyone who showed up late or for the homeless who were arrested. I made sure they could shower much sooner than 72 hours and I would help anyone who needed it get in touch with a bondsman to get them out of jail. The way I saw it. I was saving taxpayer money getting them out of jail and they already had the food that would have just lead to wasting the taxpayer money. Plus no one wants to go to court reeking of booze. Deputies COs who behave like you are appreciated. I've come across plenty of COs who needed a psychological assessment. Edit. And I wanna add this about another good one. It's so rare to find somebody who really should be there. I started out in juvie systems and there was this female CO and holy shit. She was born to work with us. If you had a physical encounter with her it was definitely because you were having a bad day and she'd be the one talking you down calming you down too. She's good people. I don't live in that area anymore but I've occasionally seen her when I've been back visiting. I've never had many urges to hug CEOs but shit yeah. I hug her. Dad was a correction captain. Tells tons of stories of the ones you're talking about. He fought the good fight though and didn't give a duck who called him an inmate lover. Fighting is one thing. Hitting someone who's cuffed or restrained is just plain abuse. No matter what happened. Some people just don't get that it isn't personal. They're attacking the uniform and you're fighting back against the jumpsuit. Oh my god. 
This wins the thread. Definitely cross posted to r slash malicious compliance for fake internet points. A buddy of mine's dad was a former cop and he told me this story about one time when he had his patrol car parked in a zone that had parking times changed or something. I'm not sure the details but certain cars in the zone were to be ticketed because of a parking violation and his patrol car was in that zone too. He ended up having to write a ticket for himself because of the parking violation. I was working security for a low income housing facility. The people that ran this facility had a little scam they did where they would turn off the fobs of tenants so tenants couldn't open the front door. It was $35 to get the fob turned back on. There were 400 tenants at this complex. At any one time a quarter of the fobs might be turned off. I was working the front desk and if a tenant had a turned off fob I wasn't supposed to let them. I would let them in anyway. I got fired. Holy shit that's awful. Good on you though. That was a side scam management was pulling. You do not want to be poor in the USA. Was an Air Force cop. Hated taking cell phones from people from the flight line. It was an arrest offense and could lose ranks and stuff. Every. Single. Cop. Has their phone on them on the flight line. I guarantee it. Can I get to Nilai 5? Please? Answered the other guy but in case you don't see that comment. Flight line is where the jets sit are worked on and launch out of their parking spots it is surrounded by a red line that you aren't allowed to cross unless you have a special badge and security clearance you're not supposed to have your phone because you cannot take pictures of the flight line in case an enemy gets a hold of them and learns where they are kept what buildings to attack etc we always had our phones just knew not to post our pictures to social media i'd never seen or even heard of anyone being arrested for it most town city ordinances. Things like not being able to park on the street in front of your house between certain hours of the night. Foo who up that. You want me to ticket some dad's car because he moved it out of the driveway so his 5 year old son could bike around the driveway? Yeah. Shit's not happening. Also. Certain traffic violations in the middle of the night. You forgot to signal your merge when you're the only vehicle on a 2 lane road at 3am. God help us all. Recently expired DLs and plates. A neighboring city wrote a car whose plates expired 11 minutes prior. Full stop. He said the person should have known it was about to expire and taken care of it ahead of time. Oh duck right off. We have all had life interfer with things. There's a huge difference between letter of the law and spirit of the law. I would say I'm probably just a terrible cop. But my coffee mug says I'm the world's best policeman. So it's definitely not that. Edit. Hey guys. Thank you. I'm really honored for the gold and stuff but it's not needed. Money is hard to come by so save it. If you have to part with it. Donate to someplace good like St. Jude's. They do good shit. I reckon your coffee mug is pretty accurate. Thanks for what you do. More specifically. For what you don't do. I'm not a police officer but work in environmental regulation and enforcement. And have powers of constabulary, UK based. There are pretty much four types of people I deal with. Business owners who treat regulations and the law like a game. Sometimes you can get away with flouting it and save make yourself a bit of money. Sometimes you win. Sometimes you lose but it's not personal. People who go out to flout the law because investigating environmental crime is relatively under-resourced and it's a good way to launder money. Farmers who are too tight or skinned to pay to ensure their farm infrastructure doesn't kill an entire river. Homeowners who simply are having a shit day and something goes wrong like an oil leak. Or their septic system breaks down. Types 1, 2 and 3 are absolutely fair game to go after. You own a business? It's your responsibility to make sure you stick to the law. Type for go? Okay technically yeah you've just discharged 1000 liters of oil from your oil tank into a river. But let's be honest. That's in no one's interests. Why on earth would I hammer someone like that for technically breaking the law? When they've already got enough headache of replacing that oil. Remediating the land. Replacing the tank etc etc. Yeah we'll recover our costs because that's fair. But I'm not about to throw the book at someone for being unlucky. I haven't been a cop for a while. But I had a, very brief, stint as a deputy sheriff a handful of years ago. 
I struggled a lot with situations in which addicts were criminalized. There was one man who I remember who had been out on parole but got caught with drugs in his system. Because of the failed drug test he was getting sent back to jail, and unfortunately, I was the one who had to take him there. It crushed me. It was an older dude who clearly didn't mean to cause trouble and clearly didn't want to be in this situation. He needed treatment. Not jail time. We also had a lot of people come through who were using synthetic drugs, like bath salts when nobody knew what they were and bath and body works took their bath salts off the shelves. It was frightening to see some of our frequent flyers come back to us more and more incoherent because of these drugs and the permanent damage they were causing. But the truly heartbreaking moment was when I was transporting a young black man who was in for marijuana possession and he said. The next time I'm just using that synthetic shit. Your tests can't see that in my system. I went full on mama bear and told him, basically begged him, not to mess with that stuff and relayed some of the things that I had seen. I have no way of knowing if he ever listened to me. But I really, really hope he did. Ultimately, my experience in this job changed my intended career path. I had been planning on staying in law enforcement for a chunk of time and then going to law school. I even had judges ready to write recommendation letters and a solid LSAT practice test score. But to see so many stupid and morally debased laws being upheld simply because that was the precedent didn't sit well with me. So I left that job and became a documentary filmmaker instead. Much less lucrative. But a more immediate way to work for justice. I'd love to check out some of your work. Could you share some of the films you're most proud of? Oh wow. I wasn't expecting anyone to ask that. Well. My thesis project is about to enter the festival circuit so I can't share the whole thing. But here is the teaser. I have other work too. But this is the most political piece I've made so far. I'm just getting started professionally. But I'm getting started on a new feature doc and I'm currently working on an application for a grant to make something about the US. Justice system. Fingers crossed. If you want to hear something really crazy. My roommate is also a documentarian and she's about to live on a research boat in the arctic for half a year. My best bud, known him 20 years, and his entire family are cops. Dad. Mom. Sister. And two brothers. All cops. Anyways. I have dinner with them from time to time and I recall one time his brother discussing having to go monitor a protest. With all the other cops in their riot gear. I was fascinated that every person, cops, at the table had the same reaction of hating protests. For different reasons. One person said it was boring and you have to stand all day. One person said it sucks when the people you're protecting start yelling at you. His mom, who was a dispatcher, said it diminishes responsibility because all the cops were tied up at the protests and that means less patrols elsewhere. Etc. Bottom line is found out cops hate protests. This is true. Worked a few Nazi rallies back in the late 70s. Think Blues Brothers movie. The Nazis hated the cops. And the crowd hated the Nazis. And we were in formation in between the two. The protesters would throw things at the Nazis. Like eggs. Tomatoes. And mate zeros. Trouble is. Most people can't throw for shit and we'd get pelted with this stuff. Or have a mate zero blow up right next to you protests suck big time. The protesters would throw things at the Nazis. Like eggs, tomatoes, and mate zeros. This escalated quickly. A buddy of mine used to be a cop and said he never got anyone for weed because it's too much hassle and it'll be legal soon anyway. What do you mean the suspect had 5 kilo of weed? No. No. There was nothing in his car. 5 hours later at his house. What 5 kilos? Only saw four. I've had a few good experiences with reasonable cops over the years. One time I was rolling into a small town in western NY in a snowstorm and had a radar detector on the dash. I see a cop coming the other way and beep. I look down and I'm going like 32 in a 25. I look in the mirror and he flips around and I just pulled over and waited for him to catch up. He gets out and says you were going a little fast back there. Why yap pull over? I said roads are slick. Didn't want ya to have to catch up to me. He goes back and runs my plate. Comes back and bullshits with me for a couple and says you have a good day. 
Get him out of the snow. Friend of mine is a cop in a small town in western NY. He's told me before how much he hates having to chase people. And people who know they are the reason the cop put his lights on and just pull over right away are much less likely to get a ticket. I had a run-in with the cops a few years ago where they could have easily taken me for at the very least public intoxication. But they cut me a break and gave me a ride home instead. Made me feel like they didn't want to take some drunk idiot to jail when he was just trying to get home and sleep. Here's a copy paste of the full story if anyone is interested. I had taken a cab back from a work party and I was pretty drunk. My friend and I had just moved to this new apartment so I accidentally gave the cab driver the wrong address. I ended up on a block that looked very similar to mine and a building that looked like mine. There were two doors before getting to my apartment door. Which was on the first floor. Like my apartment building they left the first door unlocked and locked the second door. I kept trying my keys to open it but I couldn't and was confused. I went outside to look for my car and it wasn't parked there. That's when I realized I was on the wrong block. I started walking in the direction I thought my apartment was when a cop car pulls up. They ask me what I'm doing and I tell them. I'm really drunk and I just want to go home which was the honest truth. They told me they got a call about someone trying to get into an apartment building. I guess the people in that apartment building woke up and thought I was trying to break in. They were super suspicious of me at first. But eventually it became clear I was just some drunk idiot and not a burglar. They ran me through to make sure I didn't have warrants or anything and when I checked out they offered me a ride home. The ride back was hilarious because when we were getting to my apartment I tried telling them that it was a bit complicated to get to because of all the one way streets. The officer driving was like. Who do you think you're with? And then turned on the lights and went the wrong way down the street to get me home faster. It honestly felt like I was with the two cops from Superbird. I remember this story and enjoyed it a lot. Sounds like cops will not throw an intoxicated person in jail as long as they are not acting like an a-hole idiot. Ah yes. You slash coke daddy Karen. In Canada. When an alcoholic is placed on conditions not to consume alcohol. It feels like a real dong move to charge them with breaching conditions if the only offense they're committing is the consumption breach. On the other hand it makes for a great additional charge you can slap on a-holes who are, heck, beating their wives while drunk. Ducking like and subscribe.